Hi there, Josh Powers here with Quixel, and today we're going to talk a bit about the Unreal and Unity game engines. In the past, the two engines took very different approaches to development. Unreal has typically put a heavy emphasis on visual fidelity to allow AAA studios to create a high quality cinematic experience for the player, while Unity is primarily focused on user-friendly development tools and third-party content catered to smaller developers. Fortunately, those days seem to be behind us as both Unreal and Unity have made huge strides to make their technology fit within the scope of any project. So, whether you're a multi-million dollar studio or an army of one, both engines are solid choices to make fun and credible looking games. This allows you to choose an engine for your project based on the finer details of the tech and what you're most comfortable using. Here we have a small scene inspired by Uncharted 4 built exclusively with Megascan assets inside Unreal. And here's the same scene created with Unity. While there are some noticeable differences between the two, each one displays a high quality level of lighting, PBR rendering, and post-processing, which gives you the tools you need to make your game compete with any other on the market. Since we know both engines are capable of giving you great looking results, let's take a look at a few of the differences and similarities between the two. Learning new software can be a daunting task, and it always takes a bit of work. And some tools take more work than others. However, Unity, in my opinion, is neither difficult nor intimidating to learn. Since usability has always been one of the core focuses of the company, you can always expect user-friendly tools, plug-and-play menus, and perhaps an overly simplistic UI that will help you get up and running in the engine in no time. Out of the box, Unity gives you a solid platform to build your game on. However, its simplicity is also something of a weakness, as it can be quite restricting in what you're capable of doing without writing or purchasing custom code and scripts. Unreal, on the other hand, is on the opposite end of the spectrum. There's little doubt that the first time you opened up the engine, especially if it was Unreal 4, you were a bit intimidated. I've been using the tech since Unreal 2, and it still makes my head spin. There are a lot of tools and options at your fingertips, which can be overwhelming. But once you get the hang of how everything works, you quickly realize just how much flexibility the engine gives to content creators. With node-based scripting and material editors, you can create some incredible things with limited to no programming experience. Unreal Engine is also thoroughly documented by Epic Games, and if there's not an answer in the documentation, there's almost certainly one in the forums. And if you just want to learn how to do something cool, there are thousands of tutorials on YouTube with new ones added every day. Quixel has also developed a fantastic plugin for both Unity and Unreal that will connect the engines with the Megascans bridge, allowing you to seamlessly integrate Megascans assets into your project, giving you the content you need to build out a AAA quality level in no time. The tools in both engines make building a level a breeze, and the differences between the two are fairly minimal. Unreal has a bit more of a traditional level editor feel to it, where you'll build out your world using a grid. This is perfect for when you're building more urban or man-made environments with modular assets that have been carefully constructed to snap to the grid. And while this can be restrictive at times, especially with fine-tuning your asset placement, you can easily adjust the grid size so that you hardly notice the incremental movement. Or if you're willing to work off the grid, you can just go ahead and disable the grid snapping entirely by clicking here. Unity, on the other hand, is a bit more freeform, feeling more like a 3D model or such as 3ds Max, Maya, or Moto. My movements and rotations are not affected by the grid, allowing me to make very minute adjustments to my assets. This makes it very easy to use when laying out a more organic, natural environment. For example, I can rotate an asset on all three axes at the same time, which is especially useful for when I want to quickly work on the composition and silhouettes of my scene, while in Unreal, I would need to rotate one axis at a time. On the flip side to that coin, however, Unreal has a handy transform feature that lets you move, scale, and rotate your asset without even needing to grab the transform gizmo. By holding down control and using one or both of the mouse buttons, you can freely move your asset along a locked axis. And if you hold control and shift, your camera will also lock onto the asset as well. This little feature saves you a little bit of time with each move you make, but over the course of thousands of moves, that time really adds up. Unity sports a vertex snapping tool that I use a fair bit. Just like in Maya, if you press down V and then scroll your cursor over a vertex, you can then drag the mesh to another mesh, snapping it to another vertex. Since Unity doesn't natively support the grid system the way Unreal does, 
This feature is imperative to make sure your modular assets line up properly. And though many developers might not realize it, this nifty little feature is actually built into Unreal as well. Like with Unity, if you hold down V and move your mesh, you'll snap your pivot point to another object's vertex. But if you hold down V and use the middle mouse button on the gizmo, you can then move the gizmo to another vertex and then snap it. Though I always recommend building on the grid, it's nice to have this feature available to you just in case. The foliage tool in Unreal is a nice way to scatter vegetation, small rocks, branches, litter, and debris around your scene without having to painstakingly place each one. This tool is essential for dressing up an exterior scene like this. Unfortunately, Unity doesn't have a really good solution for this built into the engine at the moment. However, there are several good, affordable plugins available on the Asset Store, just like this one here. Unreal also offers a pretty simple BSP option for those who prefer blocking out their level using brushes instead of static meshes. The BSP is not quite as flexible to use as, say, the Radiant Editor from the Quake engines, but it will let you quickly rough out areas of your level without having to constantly re-import FBX files from your 3D package. Though Unity doesn't have a traditional BSP system in place, you can use ProBuilder to create blockouts for your level. It too feels more like a 3D modeling package than a world editor, which gives you a lot of flexibility when building out your levels. However, you'll first need to go to the package manager and then load ProBuilder to your project. The actual process of importing assets into the engine is nearly identical for both. In Unreal, you can simply click Import, or you can drag and drop files right into your project. The same goes for Unity, Import Asset, or drag and drop. Things start to get a little bit different between the two once the files are imported. In Unreal, you'll either create a new material and connect the textures to the proper outputs, or make a material instance off a master material, which is something I'll talk a bit about later. Then simply apply your material to your mesh. You'll probably want to adjust a few of the mesh settings, such as light map resolution and LODs, but by and large the default settings are fine. And now your mesh is ready to place in your level. Unity's process is a little different. After import, you'll also set up your material by dragging the textures into the proper inputs. Then you'll apply the material to the mesh and then drag it into the level. Now the best practice for Unity is to nest your models inside a prefab. This way, if you make an adjustment to one prefab, it'll update all prefabs. You would do this by zeroing out the mesh, then go to Game Object, Create Empty. This will put an empty node into your level. Go ahead and name that whatever you want, and then zero that out as well. Then drag your mesh on top of the empty node, check the static box if you want your asset to receive bake lighting, and then drag the prefab into your prefabs folder. Now you have a prefab. From there, you can add your mesh's LODs, attach game scripts, cameras, etc. Using prefabs has a lot of benefits, but it can be frustrating at times. If you aren't careful, you might accidentally select the model itself instead of the prefab. If you do this, you'll be moving around the actual model, not the prefab, which can cause several issues, including incorrect collision and LOD popping, as you can see here. So always be sure you're selecting the prefab and not the mesh itself. Speaking of LODs, as you saw before, it's pretty easy to set up your LODs in either engine. Unity requires separate model imports for your LODs, which means you'll need to create your own. Unreal, however, has an auto LOD system that is pretty mind-blowing. You simply change your LOD group to fit your asset and watch the magic happen. Unreal will generate a series of LOD models automatically based on that. You can watch the triangle count drop the further your camera gets away from the mesh, yet there's virtually zero popping. Also, let's say that you have a mesh that's a bit too heavy on the polys. Unreal has a poly reduction tool that will let you crunch that down to a much more manageable poly count, while maintaining silhouette and respecting UV edges. For example, the mesh here is 14,000 triangles. After a 75% reduction, you can barely notice a difference, from 14,000 to 3,500, with no obvious anomalies. Pretty impressive. As you can see, importing is pretty straightforward in either engine, with Unreal having a few extra bells and whistles. But my preferred method of importing is still to just click on one of the many great assets inside Megascan's bridge, and export to whichever engine I'm currently working in. It doesn't get any easier than that. 
Unreal is very well known for its powerful node-based material editor that gives artists an insane amount of flexibility to customize their materials. Though the tangled mess of spaghetti noodles connecting from one node to the next might look scary, it's actually pretty simple once you break it down, and the amount of control you can have over how your texture renders is pretty staggering. There's virtually no limit to what kind of materials you can concoct inside the material editor using the massive palette of pre-made nodes. And if you feel a bit lost, there are countless tutorials online on how to make some pretty cool looking materials inside Unreal so that you can quickly get your project looking how you want it to. Taking things a step further, you can create master materials and material instances inside Unreal to further streamline your development process. Think of a master material as a material prefab. You would build it like any other normal material, but using parameter nodes that are accessible outside the material itself. You would set up the material to have access to several texture inputs along with quite a few other options that will let an artist create a custom looking material without ever needing to open the actual material editor. A master material might contain dozens of different texture options and settings, but when you set up your material instance, you only use what you need. For example, if you have a basic rock, you might just want to use the standard texture set and maybe the albedo tint. But let's say you wanted some sort of crazy sci-fi rock. Well, you could use the same material instance, but activate the emissive options to allow you to add some glowing text to your rock. Besides saving you the time of creating a new material with every asset you import, master materials are great for keeping things organized, consistent, and updated. If you make a change to the master material, it will update every material instance referencing it. This way, if you or your tech artist adds a cool new feature to the master material, you'll see it added to your material instance as soon as you update it instead of changing dozens if not hundreds of materials manually. Master materials are remarkably powerful and a huge time saver. Up until recently, I would have said that Unity's material system was a bit one dimensional and lacked the type of customization you'd get with Unreal. Before, if you needed your material to do something that the standard Unity materials didn't offer, you'd have to either write or purchase a custom shader. But once again, Unity is closing the gap between the two engines even further with the addition of the new shader graph. If you're used to working with Unreal's Material Editor, then you should feel right at home with Unity's Shader Graph. There are hundreds of different node functions to help customize the look and feel of your material, giving you the flexibility to create something pretty unique, just like in Unreal. So with this latest feature, you can now create custom shaders for your project without ever writing a single line of code. And since shaders are naturally set up like a master material in Unreal, all you need to do is expose the parameters you want to be editable in your material, and then you'll be able to adjust them in the material itself. It's very simple. Subsurface scattering is key to creating believable foliage in your scene, and this is an instance where Unreal has a leg up on Unity. A lot of time and effort has gone into these shaders to create incredibly realistic light diffusion, and with a few parameters set up in the master material, you'll have a lot of control over how this looks. While Unity does offer a subsurface scattering shader, out of the box the shader is a bit more subdued and might require a bit of effort to get something that matches Unreal. Another nice feature Unreal offers is vertex painting on a static mesh. This feature allows you to get a lot of use out of a single mesh without it ever feeling repetitive. And depending on how complex you're willing to make the material, you can have multiple layers on top of the base material so that you can really customize each asset placed in your level. Though Unreal has a couple of nice features that Unity still lacks, and has an abundance of online tutorials to help you quickly learn the material editor, Unity's new shader graph really levels the playing field between the two engines in this area. Unity recognized that a flexible node-based shader system was one of the major elements missing from their tech, and they finally addressed that problem with the shader graph. A solid lighting engine has always been a top priority for Unreal, which is not something Unity has always been able to say. But that's not the case anymore, as Unity has completely overhauled their lighting engine to take full advantage of the new HD rendering pipeline. On a high level, both lighting systems are very similar and pretty straightforward to use. Both offer the same basic light types, directional light, which is sunlight, a spotlight, an omni light, and an area light, which is also called rectangle light in Unreal. With these four light types, you can pretty much accomplish most of the lighting challenges you'll face on a given project. You can also utilize emissive textures as a light source in both engines, which can be baked into your scene. This helpful feature was used by Victor here to achieve the incredible looking neon lighting in this scene. In addition to this, you have environment light properties that you can adjust to act as a fake bounce or ambient lighting. In Unreal, this comes in the form of the skylight entity. However, in Unity, these settings can be found in the lighting tab of the properties window. In both engines, you'll choose between baked or dynamic lighting. 
Baked lighting is much more cost effective in terms of performance and you will get some pretty beautiful global illumination out of the bake. The downside to baked lighting is that it can take quite a long time to render out and your PC will want to do little else in the meantime. Also, if your game has a dynamic time of day system or is heavily reliant on movable and destructible environments, baked lighting might not be the best option for you. In general, both engines handle dynamic lighting pretty well. And while you'll lose out on some of that nice looking GI you'd get with a bake, you can utilize the skylight or environment lighting options to help fake some of that bounce lighting and ensure your shadowed areas never get too dark. As far as the standard lighting goes, it's pretty neck and neck between the two engines. Unreal does have a few features that come standard with the engine that Unity lacks, such as true volumetric lighting, which is quite remarkable. However, these features, while impressive, would not be a deal breaker for me on deciding which engine to use. Post-processing plays a huge role in your game's look and feel, and has become a must-have for any AAA game engine. Fortunately, both Unreal and Unity excel in this area. Both engines come with a wide array of options, including screen space ambient occlusion, bloom, vignetting, depth of field, and color correction. I personally find Unreal's color correction tools to be a bit less enjoyable to work with, though admittedly you do have a lot of control over it. But because of this, I will typically take a screen grab of the environment and then use layer adjustments inside Photoshop to achieve the look I want. After that, I drag and drop those layer adjustments on top of this lookup texture and then plug it into the post-process volume, which will give me very similar results as to what I had created in Photoshop. Unity's color correction options, in my opinion, are a bit more user-friendly, which will help me lock down my scene's colors quickly. And while Unity does also let you use lookup textures created in Photoshop, it requires a .cube file instead of a simple texture. So if you're using a non-creative cloud version of Photoshop, you probably won't have an option to export that type of file, something to be aware of. In my experience, you can throw a whole lot of polygons at either engine, and it'll run pretty well. Material and shader complexity, along with dynamic lighting, is where you'll find a lot of your perf issues. Nevertheless, it's just good practice to optimize as much as possible so that your game will run even on lower-end PCs. As we went over before, Unreal has options to use either custom-made LODs or automatically generated LODs, which is what I would recommend. Again, Unity's LOD system requires custom-made LODs, which can be a bit tedious to work with. But if you're using assets from the Megascans library, you won't need to worry about any of that since each asset comes with a set of heavily optimized LODs that will help you get the best performance out of your game. And when you use the Megascans importer, it will automatically set up the LODs for you too. Because Unity and Unreal are two of the biggest AAA game engines on the market, both companies understand the importance of a smooth running game and are constantly working at increasing performance while also increasing visual fidelity. It's a win-win for artists. So which engine should you choose? Well, only you can decide which one is right for your project. But as we've seen today, both are very capable engines that give you the tools you need to make great looking games. And coupled with the massive library of Megascans assets, you'll be able to make the great looking game very quickly too. While Unreal does have an edge in a few areas, Unity is turning that tide a little more with each major update they release, and developers will greatly benefit from this healthy rivalry, as it will drive both companies to concentrate on exciting new features and better performance. Thanks for watching.